Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if you've been here before, you would know that I don't tend to do many of these selfie style videos, but I'm doing one today because the camera that I'm about to unbox and explore the first impressions of the Nikon Z30 is a camera heavily directed towards vloggers and digital creators. And so I thought, why not do this in the same style? Also, I'm deliberately not using an external microphone for this video. I'm using the inbuilt microphone of my iPhone 13 mini on which I'm shooting this. Just to give you a perspective uh, of the quality of the Nikon Z30's inbuilt microphone vis-a-vis -vis the iPhones later on in the video when I take it out for a spin uh, for an actual vlogging application or use, uh, which is coming up later in the video. So please hang around for that. Okay, so what is the Nikon Z30? Uh, it is very evident that times have changed when Nikon, an extremely conventional Japanese camera manufacturing company, actually talks more about the video capabilities of their camera than the actual still photography, as they did with the Z30. In fact, I had to dig around in the specifications to even find out what is its uh, still photography resolution which turns out uh, 21 megapixels and 11 frames per second continuous burst speed. So that is how focused they are on remaining relevant and creating something for this Instagram Reels, YouTube, social media generation. So um, it is meant to be a compact, lightweight vlogging camera uh, to provide some competition to Sony who've been running away with it for quite some time. So we'll unbox it, take it out for a brief while. This is not a full test, by the way, this is just initial impression. So I'm going to do my best to explore as much as possible within the uh, limited time. And we're going to get some idea of whether it is any good at all and if you should consider it. As always, a big shout out to Book My Lens. That's www.bookmylens.com, the rental company in Bengaluru, uh, who have sent this camera and this lens to me today to unbox and share my first impressions. And it is on rent with them right now. So please log on to www.bookmylens.com right away to hire it, take it out for a spin and try it out for yourself and make amazing vlogs. So with that said, let's take a look at the two babies that I have here for unboxing. I have the Z30 of course, which also comes with a free SD card, which is a little distance away here and the 18 to 140mm ZDX lens which has a maximum aperture range of f3.5 to 6.3. Note that this is not one of the kit lenses that come with the Z30. Those would be the 16 to 50 and the 50 to 250mm lens. This is a, a different lens which is actually a little more ideal for travel photography and uh, general all-purpose vlogging kind of uh, a situation. Right, uh, that's enough of a background, so let's go ahead and unbox it right about now. Okay, as always, you have some paperwork as soon as you open the box. There is a list of service centers, a warranty. Still don't understand why they do a printed warranty, really. It's entirely unnecessary, especially since it's not stamped. And uh, then you get into the box, you have some accessories, including this USB cable, seems to be USB type B to C. By the way, the Z30 can run on power continuously. So if you're running out of battery life and you're in a very long shoot, you can actually plug the Z30 directly to the power using the USB cable and it'll work. Then you have a strap. What else? You have the battery provided separately. Okay, that's not inside the camera and then finally you have the camera itself let me get that out and keep the box away just hang on i'm doing all this single-handedly so it's not as elegant as it usually is okay it comes out there you go Right, so certainly the first thing you notice is just how light and small it is. I mean, make no mistake, this is actually 
a DX, that is APS-C mirrorless camera in a point and shoot form factor because as you can see, there's absolutely no viewfinder. I mean, not even an electronic viewfinder, uh, which uh, usually there is for a mirrorless camera, which is exactly what makes me uh, think that this is more a point and shoot form factor than uh, a mirrorless camera really, but with the infinitely added benefit of interchangeable lenses and of course, uncompromised specifications to a great extent. So what are the specifications uh, in video? It, you have 4K up to 30 FPS and you have um, 120 FPS at 1080p, which, is, which isn't earth shattering, obviously, because these days, uh, every other phone has these, but you have these things in addition to the ability to change lenses and use it uh, with long lenses, which you cannot do with smartphones, or at least not straight out of the box. Uh, so that is where I think Nikon is hoping it can make a difference against smartphones and offer better capability and more flexibility. So the LCD closes inward. Nikon mentions that as a feature as well, which I think is stretching it a little bit uh, because that's no big thing and nor is it anything new. But for me, what is of course more useful is the fact that you can twist the LCD this way so that you can look at yourself while filming yourself, which you tend to have to do quite a bit when recording vlogs. Okay, so what else do we have here at the back? Because a lot of point and shoot cameras tend to compromise the um, functionality or the ergonomics on the body. Uh, not quite so much the case here with this camera because you have the uh, arrow multi-directional keypad here. You have the zoom buttons here, you have the menu, you have playback, and then of course you have the switch to toggle between the camera mode and the video mode. Interesting that straight out of the box, the Z30 is set to camera mode. I would have thought that they would have set it to video mode considering how it's geared towards vloggers. Anyway, uh, you also have an AEL AFL button. So it's quite interesting that Nikon found this space to accommodate that because I would have thought that is one of the first things that would have got sacrificed at the altar of vlogging. Uh, then you have the continuous burst uh, button here, which also serves as a timer, self-timer button. Then you have the delete button over at the top. Uh, you have the exposure program dial, which I will straight away put into maybe aperture priority. Uh, then of course you have a hot shoe and very importantly, you have a stereo microphone. You have the left side and the right side built in. We're definitely going to see out in the field how well that is going to perform. Uh, and of course you have the loopholes for the strap. Then you have the ISO button right here, which uh, we're all familiar with, with most contemporary Nikon cameras. Uh, and you have the exposure compensation button along with the power on off switch and a big fat record button here for good reason. And of course you also have the uh, command dial here. There is There are two command dials, Nikon has again found space to accommodate two command dials, one in the front and one at the back. And then you have two function buttons over here at the front, FN1 and FN2, and of course the lens mount uh, release button. You also have another small little thing which Nikon touts as a feature, which is the record in progress uh, uh, light or bulb, which is right here uh, just below the Nikon logo so that you can know when your camera is recording. Although of course, uh, it is entirely superfluous if you have the uh, LCD directed towards you because you can see very well see it right there as well. In terms of ports, you get three. You have a microphone port, you have an HDMI output and you have USB. So clearly no audio jack here, which you can plug in in order to better hear the audio, which is a little surprising. What is also a little surprising to me is the lack of in-body image stabilization, uh, which for a vlogging camera you would think is pretty important. But I suppose, again, because it's built to a cost and a size and a weight, perhaps they couldn't afford to have it there, who knows. Uh, at least uh, it's salvaged to some extent by the fact that the lenses that come uh, compatible with it mostly have VR. So we're going to see in the field test how effective that is. Also, you get a single SD card slot and there are no dual slots here and it's in the same compartment as the battery.
that's the uh, first out of the box look at the Nikon Z30 incredibly light very compact uh, you it's actually the next best thing to a smartphone and in some ways perhaps even more compact than a smartphone if you look at something of the size of a, an iPhone 13 Pro Max uh, so of course when you add the lens it's going to be a lot bigger which is what we will get to next which is the 18 to 140mm f3.5 to 6.3 VR ZDX which I have right here so let's go ahead and unbox it Okay, a similar experience here. You have some paperwork right out of the box. And then you open this little flap and then you get into the lens. Right, there it is. This is the Nikol DXZ 18-140mm to f3.5-6.3. to Again, very light. And for the first time, a Z lens actually feels a little plasticky, which is understandable because they're going for lightness here over durability or anything else, which I think your neck will thank you for after three or four hours of uh, walking around wearing it. And yet it has a decent zoom range, 18 to 140 mm, the perfect travel sort of uh, setup. And the maximum aperture at 140mm f6.3, mm, not very sure about that. I think that's a little low to be honest, especially because the performance of the Z30 is not going to be as good as that of a full frame camera because it's a DX sensor after all. And uh, it, you're definitely going to have to struggle a little bit in low light. But then again, it's built to cost and size more importantly than cost. And also because you're going to be using it for videos mostly, you might get away with it. And also, um, you might not use it for videos at 140mm all the time. I think that's going to be relatively rare. And so you can expect a larger aperture at shorter focal lengths. So this shouldn't be too bad. So what I'm going to do now is to just take a look at its capabilities and get some sort of an initial feel for how good a vlogging setup this actually is. I'm going to teleport myself to the Tudor style Windsor Castle-esque Bangalore Palace. We've had a tour of the palace and uh, we've seen the interiors, we've seen the slow motion shots. So what do I feel overall after this first experience with the Z30? Well, uh, there were a few things that I was assessing here. The first was the ability to handhold it uh, for slightly extended periods of time. Doesn't seem to be a problem. Of course, it's not as light as a smartphone with the lens on, so it does uh, become telling on your arms a little bit, but you can always shift hands just like this without even the viewer getting to know, so it's really not a big deal. Uh, the second thing is the inbuilt microphone sound quality, which is something, of course, I'll be able to assess only after going back and uh, seeing these videos on the computer. Uh, so hopefully it's good enough because you can't always use an external microphone, especially when you have uh, someone coming in and voices in the background like this. Uh, it remains to be seen how good it actually is. The third thing is uh, usability in terms of this LCD and uh, the ability to change settings on the fly and things like that doesn't seem to be a problem because this is a touch screen and I can always just 
touch something and change uh, that setting for instance exposure compensation here I just have to click on the exposure compensation button and then I get a slider which I can move around to change the exposure. A couple of annoying things about it. One, it would have been nice if it were implemented just like in a smartphone where uh, you can just tap on a bright area or a dark area and uh, slide to change the exposure but here you have to tap specifically on the exposure compensation button so it could have been a little more user friendly and intuitive if that weren't the case and also once you set the exposure compensation that you want you have to mandatorily press the OK button to exit and you can't just tap anywhere on the screen and exit so that those are a couple of minor annoyances <clears throat> but otherwise uh, the ability to see yourself easily on the LCD um, facing you is pretty useful, no question about it. The next thing I was concerned about was the autofocus performance, especially when I'm speaking into the camera like so and you have confusing backgrounds, changing backgrounds, shadows on my eyes while wearing a cap um, and the performance against the light and so on. As you can see, we have the sun here in the frame behind me right now so I was interested in seeing how good that part of the performance is and I think it's done fairly okay hasn't it I mean I've been in focus throughout pretty much and even if I zoom in a little bit to be certain I think it looks pretty okay doesn't it so uh, also you can clearly see that you get shallower depth of field than in a smartphone especially of course if you shoot wide open or with a large aperture and so uh, that is definitely uh, something that distinguishes your footage from uh, typical smartphone footage and gives you that uh, edge in terms of production quality and perception of the quality of your video so that is one um, triumph over a smartphone you can say uh, and as is the dynamic range obviously because the sensor is larger than a smartphone the uh, dynamic range is definitely wider and therefore you get much better results in tricky situations like this so what do i not like about the z30 after this experience a few things one the battery performance i did charge the battery fully before setting out on this uh, little expedition and unfortunately it tends to run out pretty quickly as you would expect from a mirrorless and this is particularly exacerbated in the z30 simply because it doesn't have any sort of a viewfinder which means you are obliged to use the LCD pretty much all the time the big LCD at the rear uh, and of course that consumes more energy than a small little viewfinder would so that's number one the second um, demerit is related to that which is that the absence of this optical or rather even an electronic viewfinder any sort of viewfinder uh, makes it a slightly suboptimal experience when doing careful photography I mean if you are okay with a smartphone shooting kind of experience the large LCD at the back is absolutely fine you'll be used to it but for serious photographers or uh, people who like to immerse themselves uh, in the frame in the image before making it it can be a suboptimal experience especially when it's really bright and sunny outdoors where you might have some difficulty uh, seeing the picture on the LCD and also I found myself reaching out and trying to look through a viewfinder multiple times but also that could be because I'm old school and I tend to favor uh, the good old tools in a lot of areas uh, to these uh, modern ones and we're back from the field test and if the transition was a little abrupt that was courtesy of the battery of the Z30 which died before I could complete my assessment but nevertheless, I think I had uh, pretty much summed up everything that I thought except the two things which I wanted to check once I was back home and had a chance to look at the footage and it's these two things. One, the stability. I'm afraid I'm not very happy with the image stabilization for video on the Nikon Z30. Uh, I mean, this is understandable because I wasn't happy with the stabilization of the Z9 itself, the flagship Nikon Z9, which has five axis in body image stabilization. So it's little surprise that I'm not happy with the stabilization of the Z30, which doesn't even have in body image stabilization. So as a vlogging camera, I'm a little disappointed, frankly, uh, that uh, there is just so much shake that filters through 
into your videos even in slow motion for that matter in fact much of the footage uh, that you saw slow motion footage in the little uh, montage that i created uh, have been stabilized in post production so if i hadn't added that stabilization it would have looked worse so that is certainly something that you need to keep in mind you will have to factor in some sort of gimbal uh, for any sort of serious work the second is the microphone uh, which i wanted to check uh, once i was back and i'm perfectly happy with it i think it's absolutely fair uh, it does a very good job uh, for an inbuilt microphone of course you're going to have to use wind mufflers when you're using it outdoors otherwise you're certainly going to pick up uh, wind noise um so so long as you're talking into the camera holding it at this distance <clears throat> as i was in the palace uh, you'll be fine with the inbuilt microphone of course you won't be able to cut off all the background noise completely but it does a fair job i'll say but for any sort of serious work of course i would recommend an external microphone anyway so those were the two uh, things that i wanted to append uh, to the observations of my field test i think that's about as much as i can say about the camera at the moment let me remind you that it's on rent right now at uh, book my lens so log on to the link in the description below that's www.bookmylens.com to book it take it for a spin try it for yourself and make your own conclusions i'm going to see you soon in the next video until then thank you for watching bye bye